All right, today's video is talking about the show picker method. Now, this is a method that is specifically bound to these controls. So I have an input that is tied to a data list. So here's my list of elements. I've got a color picker, date picker, time, date, time, month, week, and a file. All of these controls, when you click on them, you're going to get some sort of built-in dialogue. This thing, the picker. And the type of picker you're going to get is going to depend on which browser you're using and which operating system you're on, because they're all slightly different. They're all formatted. It's system controls, really, that we're bringing up here. So the system control for picking a color and so on. Now, with all of these things, we can, in JavaScript, dynamically make the control appear. So if that's something that you need to do, that's what this method is all about, the show picker. And it's a pretty simple method. I mean, it's one command. You've got the element, a reference to the element, and you call show picker. Great. That'll make it appear. But there's some security issues. There's some different errors that can occur. And so I'm just going to show you how to walk through, how to test, because the support is not absolutely everywhere for all the controls. We've got support in Chrome and Edge and Opera right now across the board. Firefox has most of them, and it's under development in Safari to uh, be implemented across the board. So let's take a look. Um, as I was saying, we've got an input with a list. Here's my data list right here. So I'm using the list attribute to tie to my data list. That's how I'm populating this. And then the other controls, they're all just standard input. Type color, type date, time, date, time, local, month, week, file. So all the standards. In my JavaScript, all I'm doing right now is I've got a click listener on my button. Now, if I click on this button, what's going to happen is because this button is inside of a form, all of this is contained inside of a form. If I click on this, it's going to want to submit it. And I can tell that it's going to do that. If I watch in the location bar here, we can see query string was developed with all the contents of the form. So here's all my controls, all their names, and question mark to start the query string. And there's no values for any of them because I haven't picked anything for any of them. So I know that what's happened here is the page has reloaded. I've submitted the form. My console log message was there, but only briefly before the page reloaded. So let's fix that problem first of all. First thing that we're going to do with the click event is use our prevent default. And this is the standard method. Anytime you want to stop an anchor from reloading a page, if you want to stop a form from submitting and reloading a page, this is how we do it. So with that in there, I can now click this as many times as I want. And all it does is write out this message. Great. Now, testing for support. If I want to find out whether or not the browser that I'm currently using uses the show picker command, we just have to look and see, hey, is there something called show picker inside of the HTML input element prototype? If that property exists, then I know, yes, it is supported. If not, then no, it's not. Now, I want to be able to run the control, um, the method on each one of these controls. So inside the yes section, this is where I'm going to do it. Now, there is a potential for three different types of errors. So I'm going to wrap all of this inside of a try catch. We're going to try to call the show picker method. Here's the error that I'm going to get. And I'm going to use a switch case statement. I'm going to look at the error object and see what its type property is. And three cases here, I'm just going to copy and paste them in. There we are. So these are the three errors. Invalid state, not allowed, and security error. Invalid state means the control itself, the input, the HTML input element, is not in a state that you're allowed to change anything about it. So most likely, it's been disabled. Not allowed error. Um, this you'll find with some controls uh, that are part of forms. There's some other controls that are uh, involved in web pages. They have to be triggered by a user interaction. 
you're not allowed to, for example, pick a file from the user's operating system and then load it into the web page without the user first sort of initiating that thing. It's kind of like with a, a progressive web app. You're not allowed to start the install process without the user initiating that process. They have to have clicked or done something. And this is what transient activation is. So not allowed error means that, hey, you tried to do the show picker thing without the user starting the process. Uh, security error. This is when you're dealing with iframes, if you're calling from one script uh, and then you're running a control that's inside of an iframe, if they don't have the same origin, then it's going to give you this security error. And then any switch case, you should always have a default, just whatever the other error is. So we've got these errors are the ones that come up with show picker. And here's all of my controls. And you can see the syntax is the same, regardless of which control we're talking about. I'm just going to call the show picker method. So we'll uncomment this one, save it. So inside my try, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to launch the color picker. I will get an error message appearing if it doesn't work. There we are. There's the color picker. You want to see the data list one? There we go. There's the data list. It's underneath the color picker one. So we could comment those ones out. You want to see the week? There it is. So for any control whatsoever that you want, if you want to do multiple ones at the same time, as long as it's triggered by that transient activation, as long as the user has initiated the picking process, you can open up any of the, the uh, pickers for any of these controls. All right, so if you're looking for a copy of that code, you'll find a link to the code just down in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.